Good morning and welcome back to the channel. Steve Cronin here with this lovely 5x3 Rombus garden room, which is looking spanking. You can now see on the inside, it's looking very, very plastered. Uh, not in a heavily drinking way. Uh, nice ceiling, walls ready to rock and roll, like this. Right, so the next step is painting. Should you do it? And I'm pro painting, I like a bit of paint. So. What we're gonna do is, even though these are freshly plastered walls, what we're still gonna do is give it a quick lick over with a pile sander. So basically, you just go across the ceiling and the walls. Just a light rub, because no matter how good a plaster you are, there's always gonna be tiny bits of gritty bits or finish. Now, it feels smooth than that, but there's, there's always like little bits. And now's the time to just to kind of get rid of those. So we'll run over it with that. Once we've done that, I will go over the walls and again, just get my torch like this. Shine it down just to see any like holes, any dings, any bits and pieces I can quickly fill with my fine surface filler. Uh, then it'll be paint of the ceiling first because the ceiling has already been um, filled. I will literally show you how I do that because there's a lot of misconceptions about like new plaster work and mist coating and stuff like that. Uh, same for the walls. People go nuts and they go, oh, you need to seal it and you've got to put white over it and you need to knock it right down and stuff. No, stop it. This is disinformation, I don't like it. I started my career as a decorator. My old man was a decorator, still is, about to retire. And my granddad was a decorator. So I know a little bit about it, okay? I've been doing this for many, many, many years, okay? So the ceiling, I'll show you how I do it. But essentially, we'll take like, just under a quarter, we'll roll it in one direction. Then we'll load up again, roll it in the opposite direction. So it's called cross rolling. That gives it depth. Okay, the worst thing you can do is just run around with a really sloppy, pissy coat and go around the whole thing and seal it and then walk away. Because what you've now done is you've prevented the plaster, the bare plaster from being able to absorb the, the paint. Okay, because now it's sealed. So by giving it a lick in one, one section and then immediately cross section it, it's, it's, it can still pull in because it's still wet. It's still drawing that in, which means you're getting a good, good bond with this one. You're not putting the paint on straight. I mean, it depends where you buy your paint from. For my demonstration, I only ever use Dulux Trade. Um, so I will piss it out, but not wishy-washy, just enough that I can get movement on it, and it's watery enough that I know, like I say, it can be pulled into the bare plaster. But not a, not a pissy coat, okay? Like three coats, this would be done. So literally, I'll do like the crisscross, both directions on a quarter, or just under a quarter, another quarter, boom, 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 so it's all white. Then once that's kind of gone off and dried a bit, I will then double check it needs filling. If it doesn't, it will then get its third coat immediately. And that's the ceiling done. Walk away, you're finished. Drop the brush. And a bit of same for the walls. Exactly the same. So this is going in a feature color. So this will have been cutting once, rolled twice, cut in again, and then final roll done. Same for these other three walls. And that is it. The thing about like going ahead and like putting it in say white is you just create more work for yourself as well because you know you put it on there and I know what the argument's gonna be, but if you put white on it, you know, again, you because you want it to draw in, you don't just seal it, you have to put two cuts on straight away. Well that's just cost you white emulsion, it's cost you time. You go on it straight away with the colour you're using. Yes, you're using a lot more of the paint because it's being absorbed into it, but you're building up your layers of a finish. So three coats and I'm done. Whereas if you're gonna mist coat it, you've got to put the mist coat on. You've had to pay for that paint to mist coat it. And yeah, white is cheaper, but not a lot. And then you still want to go over and give it your two, three coats of your top coat color. What the, what the, why? Just why, just stop it. Just crack on with the color, whatever color this is gonna be, do it in that color. That one the same, that one the same. I'm quite, quite strong about this stuff. <laughs> I didn't realize how emotional I was gonna be. But that is it because I just want you to spend less time working and more time enjoying it. You know, there are certain things you have to spend time doing, but this is, to, this is a no-brainer. Just go in the colour you're going to go in. Sorted. Right. <sighs> it's quite cathartic. I feel quite good now. Right. I'm going to give it a palm sand, and then I'm going to crack on and do some painting. Well, after I've had a check for the filler. See you in a minute. Right. That's it. Palm right. sand. That's it. Palm sand all everywhere. And I just want to show you, like, once you kind of use the palm sander, like I said, just push it over. You just kind of denibbing it. But in where we've plastered walls off of walls, you're going to get stuff like, can you see? Where is it? Uh, about there. See little knobbly bits, yeah? So just go around with a blade and just get rid of all those little snots that are sort of built up. That gets rid of them nicely. And just go around that, all the corners, just making sure that you've got nice 
tight square edges like this. So you can just see there. So if you just pick up on camera, bits like that, just get rid of it. Makes it nice and neat. You don't end up with slotty corners and bits of crap everywhere then. So I run around, do that now. If you see any gaps and cracks, right, put a bit of decorated cork in there now as well if you need to, uh, and then go around filler. Also a good idea, round reveals, shut these bits off while we're here. Because otherwise when you put the roller on it, they kind of fall off, get into the roller, and your roller nose it goes like ding, 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 ding. That's just annoying. That's all, it's just annoying. Uh, somebody asked me in the comments uh, for yesterday's video, what we're gonna do for the returns. That's actually gonna get done in a UPVC trim. Okay, so that's why I've not like, done corner bead and stuff because you can't really do that until the window's in because you don't know exactly what's going on. And if my windows wanna sit here, for example, and I've got a metal bead, well that metal bead is probably in my way now. And it's a bit of an ass trying to sort that out. So do it after if you're going to. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I did cut a bit of uh, MDF as a trim or a bit of UPVC, whatever needs to, just to kind of finish it off and neaten it up. So that's what happened with those external corners. But right, I'm gonna run around, shunt off, and then get back to it. Right, what's your paint dryer's currently boring? But what's it go on? It's good fun. So I thought I'd do the video showing you exactly what I'm talking about and how I'm gonna go about this. So what I've already done is, gone around, cut it all in. So I've gone around once and immediately just gone straight on top of it, okay? So that first coat is then putting in as I've gone around. Now I've gone for second coat and now I've doubled it up so that second coat is now put in as well. When it comes to rolling, Essentially, two coats, two hits in one. And what we're doing now is on the, the distancey bit, I'll bring it a bit closer so you can actually see a bit clearer, maybe. So I'll get the angle up, not particularly well on this one, but there you go, kind of see. So you can always see where the second layer of paint is compared to the first. See now, look at that bit. So double it over. Look at the depth on that compared to how it was. And now this plaster can start to pull that two coats straight in and satisfy its sucking in needs. So what I'll now do is stick you back over here because if I'm being honest, it gives it my way a little bit cramping my style, but it's okay because I like it. <laughs> Off and just rinse and repeat that process. So, first layer on. Once you got it on the end of this, it's easy. Like I say, it's basically easy, but I'll bring you up a bit closer so hopefully you can see it in a bit more detail from being far away. So, here we go. So, I should take her in this picture and see exactly. Bit, bit wide now. Oh, and the reason is that you're currently looking at it again. Bloody hell, when did he do that? Oh, Benny's in there. I don't know if I'm probably missing, so I overrode the, uh, <laughs> the recording features. So, there you go. That's what happens. It's all part of the plan. So, anyway. So, you can kind of get an idea. Look, you can see, like, the consistency of my paint. It's not thick, it's not gloopy, but it's not pissy and weak either. It's just a nice consistency to get it in, get it off. Try not to cover my phone in paint. Too much. See, what I think you boys do. Paint your phone. 
So there you go. You can see that now. See what I mean? I'm not trying to finish it. I'm not trying to do anything nice and neat with it. It's just literally just about getting it on, getting it in there. And now, let's go again. Go through the cross roll. You'll see it kind of thickens it up a tree. And this is where you start getting your depth. Loads of people don't do this, like I say, they go with that mist coat and they seal it and then they go over the top and it just takes them forever to cover it because basically what you take in is silk plaster and if you see it with a crappy, wishy-washy coat, yeah, you're looking at four coats to try and cover it. And that's if you're using good quality paint like Gilux. But if you're using some sort of home base or Wix special, I'm not going to give the Wix them, he says, um, then yeah, it's going to potentially take even more coats. And that's another thing I will say as well. When you're paying for paint and you look at paint prices, because they are flipping ridiculous, just think of it this way. If you're buying Dulux, it's costing you three times the amount, but you're getting it done like three times as fast, what would you rather? I know what I'd rather be doing. I'd rather have it done and dust it and be on to the next bit, as opposed to saving yourself 20 quid and then having to spend like a day extra trying to get that bloody thing painted and it up. You know, it is time be money sometimes, and I know paint is expensive, but ultimately you're paying for like your time as well. So there you go, you can see that extra depth now, which is lovely. So, I'll get that door to stay there. Hello. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same all the way through. Once I get to the end, I'm then gonna come back and roll the whole thing again. While it's still a bit wet, and then you also, the difference would be astronomical. Well, that, that is basically my mist coat, and it's pretty much as it will be finished then. And you see how quick and easy that is. You know, while you've got to roll it out and you're doing it, just get it done, get it finished. Depending on how dry your plaster is, if it's still a bit damp in places, it may mean that you've got areas that the paint isn't put it into, so you have to let it really, really set. Like, not to give it a day, but then go back and just touch up where you need to. But generally speaking, <clears throat> there's no reason you can't get your ceiling done one foul swoop. I'm making a piece of today. Do you want to see it? There you go. Finish this with three coats. So once she dries off, I will give her another little looky and probably give it one more. Once it's like, say, so once it's actually tacked off completely, yeah, I'll run in, give it another full coat. Done and dusted, that is the ceiling finished. Uh, and then I shall crack on with the walls. Yeah, love it, absolutely love it. I mean, it's funny, like, it feels so brightly already, just changing that color to like white. Makes a massive difference, huge, huge difference. So yeah, always love a bit of painting. Right, I'm gonna have a bite to eat and I'll be back. Just watch me on time lapse to do that one, but I thought I'd stop and just show you exactly how we go about doing the walls as well. Exactly the same principle as the ceiling, but obviously we don't have to cross line it, you don't need to worry about that part on this one. So what you're gonna do is load up and just wanna start getting it into the plaster like that. I say don't worry about tram lines and bits and pieces in a minute, you just basically wanna get your first coat going in. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And you want to work an area that's comfortable for you because you want to go back and flatten it. I mean, I'll see, we do this a little while, so it doesn't fuss me much. But hopefully, this camera angle is a good demonstration just like how nice this kind of mist coating can be compared to the old fashioned way of doing it and then ending up with like, say, pissy walls. where the uh, camera gets hit by the tripod, uh, my extension pole possibly, but I'll be careful. Right, so there you go, that's that in. So what that's doing now is that's pulling into the plaster, okay? So the plaster is absorbing that, because obviously it's a porous surface. 
But while it's still pulling it in and having fun and enjoying itself, we're going to go give it another lift straight away. And this immediately starts to build up your depth, okay? So unlike the traditional mist coat where you've got to push your one on and back off and leave it, you sealed it, the paint isn't going to move into it. It takes a lot more to cover it. Just go over it, lovely. And this time you want to kind of make sure you get rid of your tram lines. I say tram lines are just where you're not going to put a line off of the edge of the roller onto the wall. Yeah, you have done it for a while, you don't need many tram lines anyway, but just in case you are, you know to get rid of them at this stage. Don't be afraid to put it on nice and thick. And again, the consistency of this, it's like, say, you can see the consistency, it's like it's still got plenty of like opacity, the ability to cover, but it isn't just flopping off the roller, it's not like worn down so much that it's next to useless to use. I mean, look, you can see the difference already, can't it? It's got some nice depth to it straight away, and this is essentially really its first coat. And once that's dried, it pretty much looks like I finished painting the hole, so it's definitely the way to do it. I mean, to be fair, what I'll do is I'll finish this wall and then the little stand uh, front walls, and then I then dry for 20 minutes, and there you go, and then I'll give them all another lick over. And that is that. And there you go, there's essentially my mist coat for these walls now. Looks lovely, jubbly, doesn't it? And look at the depth. I mean, it's wet, so it's still hard for you to tell on camera, but trust me, that is looking flipping fan dabby dozy. See, that's three coats straight off the bat, bim bam bosh, done. Lovely depth. I don't think I've seen anywhere that needs any filling either because I ran around done it earlier, so they're in good nick. So, what I'll do now is I'll bugger off, have a quick cup of tea, bite to eat, thank you very much and then come back, give it another cut in, one more roll, done. Then I'm on to this wall. I cannot wait to paint that wall because that colour is going to pop like anything in this room. It's going to be stunning. Hold tight, you'll see it in a few minutes I suspect. All right, so what do we think of that? I told you you recognise it if you've been following me for a little while. This is a colour that comes up quite often, but flipping love it. So once it's dry and it's solid, ah, oh, big screen TV goes straight over there. Beautiful, you've got that pop of vibrant colour, just lifts the whole room. White seriously, you've got like nice open space. It just feels so nice in here now. And that's with the Ego Protect floor covering still on. Brilliant. Yeah, really, really chuffed for that. So what I'm going to do is let it dry, let it set for a bit before I give it its one final coat. In the meantime, I'm going to come back outside again because I've not been outside for a couple of days. It's not too bad. So I've got some batten down there, not bamboo cake, although I do like a bit of that. I'll start getting the battens on the front, ready for the uh, composite, which is lined down there. And yeah, that's my next plan. Once I've kind of got started with that, I'll then jump back off, give that a final coat, wash up all my stuff, and that's the decorating done. Except for the scale. And the returns of bits and pieces. But basically, basically it's done. Yeah, so it's there. Happy days. So I've changed tack just a little bit. I was just about to put some battens, got the saw kind of all set up anyway. I was like, do you know what I'll do? Because I know that the Sparky Andy is going to be in maybe tomorrow, Thursday, whenever. I'm like, I'm gonna mark up my lights. So, going back to the lighting system, which you saw in a previous video, I now know that my lights are basically 600 off each wall from the front and the back. That's where the first one's gonna be. 
obviously because of the back line running out, I measured my bits and pieces. So I've got my 600 mark minus the plaster board, so 588 eight across to there. So there's a little mark there. Get my laser shot across there. Get me 600 across here. Well, the 5878, no, five, eight, whatever, 60 minus 12 millimeters. Uh, and that's there. So then I just ping my laser line across those two markings. And now I know I can measure 600 from there to there, spot on, that's where that light is. Between that one and the next light, I've written down it's 117 centimeters, so that's that one. 117 centimeters, and then 600 off the wall. So using the laser, you can now sort of, you just ping that line and it stays there. So yeah, that's all the lights now marked up, ready for him, where'd it go? There it is, that beautiful, isn't it? And now I'll do the same for this one. I'll measure 600 from the front to there, ping the laser line, same off the other wall, where the laser loom runs, I'll then mark off where my lights are going to be. And hopefully it all lines up. Of course it will. And if it doesn't, I'll just have to make it good. I? That's what decorators are for. Said all sparks everywhere. Who's enjoyed the day? Because I have. So obviously the inside is now fully decorated for the walls and ceilings. And now if I show you this, there you go. Lovely, lovely baton on the front. So this is going to carry yeah, the composite uh, ship lap, which is going to go across the front. Still got a few bits and pieces to finish. I've just got like the centre bits across the thresholds at the bottom, like these ones. So obviously it's gonna go in that direction. So that'll hold that on. You can see all the way through to the end. So yeah, it's just a kind of tiny little bits to do. Uh, but like I say, that's a very good day. So obviously, fully decorated as you've already seen. Holes marked for the ceiling lights. And yeah, so that is it. So don't forget, if you liked what you saw, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, leave a comment. Uh, love to hear from you guys all the time. It's fantastic. Uh, apart from that, I'm going to go off. I'm going to have a cup of tea and then maybe a cold beer tonight because I'm cheeky like that. Uh, but either way, have a lovely one and I'll catch you all tomorrow.